when a customer does not like in their mark, then I rework it. It's really super rare that that happens, but I'm going to take you through some of the process. This armor was shipped to me from Trump Towers in New York uh, from a customer who lives there. This is what it looked like. It's her antique armor. She requested silver and gold or silver and gray. And so I did the gray to kind of match her bedroom area. She did not like it when it was done. She really, um, it wasn't shipped back to her, but I sent her a picture. She's like, no, 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 no. It's all wrong. She didn't uh, um, make any bones about it. She made it very clear. I do not like that one bit whatsoever. And just by the, the abrasiveness, I was taken back at first. Um, but then I thought, you know, let me just listen because sometimes people can be going through things which we don't know anything about and it's worth it just to, to take a step back, to listen, to reaffirm though she had wanted primarily silver with the gray and guys, I loved that silver with the gray. I don't know that I've ever done that specific palette before, but I thought it was beautiful. But it turns out she decided after seeing it, she wanted a lot more gold. She she didn't want anything shiny, which can be a little hard to do when you're working with silver and gold because they're metals, they're metallics, and they're going to have a little bit of a glow and, you know, a shine to them. So I came in and she wanted much more distressing. So I'll find it good. The things that she were asking for, you know, they they were reasonable changes. It didn't require all new painting. Uh, and she paid a good price for this. So I'm going to work to make her happy as, as it should be. So what I did is after I had a mix of a silver... Uh, pewter metallic from Re Rethunk Junk Paint. And the body of this is also from Rethunk Junk Paint in a custom mix color. I love that paint because it's not, it wasn't uh, necessary. It's not necessary to have a top coat on it. It, was, it dries so scuff free. But this, since I'm going back and adding the gold it was necessary for me to put on a clear wax top coat all over the armoire because I'm coming in with a dark wax. And that's what you see happening right now. So when she told me she did not like the silver and gray, once I sent her the pictures, this was yesterday afternoon. And here we are just 24 hours later. So you can see it didn't take a huge amount of time to do what she wanted. And it's totally gonna be worth it to make sure that she's happy. So I started, I did use, I wanted a brighter gold since I was going to be adding dark wax. I still want that gold to have some beautiful notes showing through. So I used um, a brighter gold, which is rust -Oleum Metallic Gold. I did on most of the detail, I left some silver in smaller sections on the detail. Once all the gold was on, I went over the whole thing with a wax brush and I used a clear wax. And then when you apply wax, you want to, like your clear wax, you want to apply it with a brush in small sections. And then within five minutes or less, you want to come back and buff it off with a lint free cloth or with a, like an old cotton t shirt, something that's not going to collect a lot of lint. So it took me to apply the gold. It took me probably about an hour, hour and a half, uh, probably about an hour and a half, including doing the tops, the sides, the bottom, all of the gold. And it took another. 30 minutes to clear wax it, I immediately, without waiting, you do not have to wait, came in with a dark wax and started adding the dark wax. And 
for adding the dark wax, I'm just using a chip brush. It's, you know, so the, the tools aren't really, really fancy. I do have a nicer, like a $30, $34 primary wax brush when I do wax for my clear waxes and salves. But for a dark wax, I just use an old chip brush that the ends are cut off and it's a, a little bit stiffer. So it just gives you a little more control. Also, she felt like the armoire was a little light. So I'm going over it pretty much the body of the armoire as well with the dark wax and wiping it right off. And it just ages it. It gives it a little bit of a smudge. It darkens up that lighter gray, making it a little more aged and antique -y. And I get it. I thought it was beautiful before with the silver and the gray. But I have to tell you, you know, her, this armor, she, this armor belongs to her. She um, did not purchase it from me. She purchased it in New York. She lived in her home with it for a while, saw some of my armors online, decided I want to add some color to my armor. So she shipped it to me. A lot of people have said, oh, you should have painted the inside. Well, it's her request that I do not paint the inside. And the reason I'm not painting the inside is because she has <clears throat> custom order curtains made. And we're going to be installing curtain bars. And that will cover up all the glass. So when it's all said and done, I think one person that commented on a post about this armor I'd made and said, you know, it looks unfinished when you look inside and see the wood. I get that, you know, the bare wood, but when it's in her home, you're not going to be able to look inside. It's going to be her beautiful custom curtains. So that leads me to talk about some questions that I get asked about. A lot of times I will not paint the insides of armors and some people will say, eh, it kind of looks unfinished or why did you choose not to do that? And sometimes I do paint them. I would say... Now I'm leaning more often to painting them. Some of the ones I've done recently, oh my goodness, they just, when the insides are painted, they truly do look stunning. But here is why I have not in the past and, and on some pieces I won't do. So it takes, the insides of armors are massive. It takes a, a good amount of time to paint and it takes a good amount of paint to paint and then if you're going to use a top coat and plus additional prep work and all of that. So it raises the price of the armoire. And especially if the armoire is already in a good condition, you know, the inside of it, if it's flawless, I just feel like, oh, is it, do I really want to paint over this flawless inter wood interior that's really beautiful? So you have your beautiful natural wood on the inside, and your color on the outside. I do kind of like that. Um, but it raises the price of the armor. So when I paint an armor and I put it on Etsy for sale, a lot of times I'll have like a little caveat note or something that says, you know, if you would like to have the interior of this armor painted, you know, let me know. It's I'll paint it for an additional fee. And then they get to choose the color too, which is really nice. Oh, about... 85% of people have uh, passed up. You know, they, they're like not necessary. On custom orders, I ask people, I'm like, if I paint the inside of the armor, it's going to be an additional $300 fee. And I would say about 50% say yes, 50 to 60% say yes, go ahead and paint it. So when they're collaborating in a custom order, a little more than half of the people tend to opt to pay that extra fee to have it painted. But I like to leave people the choice whenever possible, instead of just paying it and then having extra money raised on to the cost of the armor. And now I'm going to address a question that I get fairly often. This one came recently uh, from Patrice. It says, how do you prevent 
painting on the glass. I have tried different ways and still managed to get paint on it. She went on to say that when she tapes, she still gets paint on the glass. For me, it comes with just experience. The more and more you paint fine details, most of my armoires have a lot of detail trim. So I just get used to painting in just in a detailed manner. And so the more you do it, it's like riding a bike or sewing or any type of craft, any skill, baking, whatever it may be, building. The more you do it, the better you get at it. I don't ever, I mean, I almost 99.9% .9 of the time do I tape on glass. I just, I just don't do it. It leaves a sticky residue. Uh, so here is a trick that a girl that used to work for me did is she would take a deck of cards and the cards slide between the glass and the wood. So she would just slide those cards in and go all the way around where the glass was. And then those cards would act as a protector and keep the glass clean. So sometimes when I'm painting, there is a little, I'll have a, a little bit of paint on there. And I just try to like keep a damp cloth or you can keep a wet wipe or a baby wipe and wipe it right up. But otherwise, it's easy to clean off. I t rarely get more than a couple of little specks of paint on the glass. Usually get a little bit on there, just a, a few specks, but that's it. it. Just don't um, shy away from painting stuff with glass because the more you do it, the better you get at it. And the more things that you paint in fine detail, the more you develop a system can do it quicker and it doesn't have to take forever. When I did my first Super Warrior Nate armoire, it took me about 100 hours to do, literally. Um, it was just my first one. I was obsessive with it. Now I have a, a much quicker system, and I've cut that time down by probably about 65 70%. So all of that to say that you you get better. So another question that I get a lot is, where do you get your pieces? I live in rural Missouri. I get my pieces all over. Most of my items come from Facebook Marketplace. We'll go and inspect, and inspect them. Most of my pieces come from two to three hours away from me. However, we will go on buy-in trips a couple of times a year. We'll go 10, 12-hour drive away. We don't drive all the way across the United States but we'll go a couple of states away and just make a, a fun time of it, do a couple of fun things, take a trailer, pick up some furniture. I'll get some pieces sometimes from oh, vintage furniture stores and antique stores, antique malls, flea markets. I've gotten several pieces that way. And sometimes when my shippers are delivering in certain areas and those areas are known for having furniture like I paint, and then I'll sometimes have them bring me things back. When I do that, it can cost me a few hundred dollars to have it shipped to me. But no matter what, I am always looking for furniture. And I have found, I've had people tell me like, I never get furniture like that in my area. And so I'll say, where do you live? And a lady one time told me where she lived. And so I hopped on the marketplace and entered in her location, and about 70 miles away from her were two or three beautiful armors, like just exactly like the type that she said she could never find. So it's knowing how to search. Sometimes you may be putting in French armoire, but somebody has a linen cabinet listed as the, the listing word. So if you're just entering in one word, you could be bypassing a lot of things that might stand out. I look about every single day online for furniture, even if I'm not buying right at that moment. If I see something, but my inventory is full or my budget doesn't allow to buy new things at the time, then I will just save it and go back and check on it because in three or four weeks, things could change. And a lot of times those things are still there. So here we are concluding this is mostly wrapped up, and I think you have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. 
at the top was the way I previously painted with silver, and now we have the gold. So the final is at the top, and the before is below. This was a picture of my shop last night, and I stopped working. And some pieces I've been working on recently. New granddaughter and a painting I recently did. Just letting you in on some things. Thanks for following along. Love you guys. And leave me your questions.